Hello, people of the internet, friends, family, music enthusiasts, and eager learners of electronic music production. I have made 60 minutes of... Well, I didn't edit the video. I just hit record, and I just wanted to show you guys how I start making a track. Uh, so this is basically what I created in the lesson. So yeah, nothing too complicated, just a bit of a groove. Um, so working in Ableton, not using Logic or Cubase or Fruity Loops. So hopefully you can follow along and not um, be too handicapped if you're not using this door. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. So uh, first thing first, have a little bit of coffee, caffeine, if you've all smoked your cigarettes and had your, had your teas and coffees and ready to get stuck in. So first, just load up a blank session. And um, to be honest, I never really, unless I've got an idea of what I want to do, I usually just pick a random tempo. Um, that's probably the first thing, I pick a tempo. So let's just go... <sighs> Let's go one thirty four. Doesn't really matter at this stage. So we have MIDI track. I'll probably start with a kick. Maybe I'll start with a loop. So I'd start with like a kick and a bass or a kick and some percussion or something like this. Gonna go for let's just go for a four four loop. Some kind of like techno -y progressive trance thing. So in Ableton, you've got these two different views. I can toggle between that using this shift or tab, tab key. I don't know exactly what that is, but it does that. You can go between uh, this view and the other view. Anyway, let's not procrastinate on the tab key. Uh, you have this little thing here you can move around, which is the loop. You just hover over the top here and you get these little... Um, horizontal arrows and you can move it around you can stretch it out at the moment it's uh, covering four bars I believe so let's have it start on bar 17 so I've got a bit I can work backwards <laughs> I tend to work backwards in most ways okay so I can hit this um, button here that's going to loop this section but what I'll do is I'll just select four um, Four, four bars, and if I press Command, Shift, and M, I get a MIDI track. And for the kick, I'm just going to draw in a note, doesn't matter what note, on, um, on each beat. And then I'm going to drag and paste. So what I do, I just click on the point I want it to paste at, so 1.2 here right to the f first um, point here and then I press command D and it just duplicates it or I could do it manually but it's just easier so in Ableton the loop feature is here I can turn that on and off when it's when it's turned on like this because I made the um, made the track this long when I drag it out it's just gonna Make. it's just going to continue the same the same length but um, yeah this is all quite simple stuff so far and I'm gonna use I'm gonna use kick 2 which is my preferred kick source it's basically it's a pretty good plugin actually um, would I like to update no <laughs> uh, it's pretty cheap I think I paid about 50 50 squids for it um, and I use it more or less in every project, so definitely worth the money. I'll just guide you through how I make a kick. So straight off the bat, it sounds like this. I'll just turn it down in case it's too loud. Also arm the track by pressing this. That's just like initialized kick. So you've got all these samples on the side here. 
they're just like hi hat samples, or you can you can add them um, over the top of. So you can do like nice layering. But I'm going to turn these off for now. So I just press this M, which means mute. Um, I'm going to turn the drive down a little bit because I don't want it to color the sound too much. And then basically here is the pitch pitch area. Uh, so this works using these little nodules, these little nodes, um, and I'll show you how it works. The best way to uh, play around with this is to literally just move stuff around and then you'll get a feel of how it works. But usually, so basically you can make your, your kick in pitch of whatever you're doing. So I'll show you how it works. So I'll just take, delete these by double clicking. And now if you listen to it. <laughs> it's like a zappy gun. And um, so let's just say the track's in, I don't know, D. We can set the first one to D and the bottom one to D, like this. See, that's not our kick. Uh, we have the length here. We can make that a bit shorter. So let's make it, I don't know, like f just under 400 milliseconds. So it sounds a little bit more like a kick now. Um, what we can also do, let's add another one. And it, when I move this around, just listen to what it does. As it becomes more dense, adding more pitch. This kind of thing, as I move it more towards the left, it kind of opens up the sound wave and it makes it more acoustic or hollow. And you can add as many, as many of these as you want. You can see how you can really shape the sound. So let's just for now just keep it and keep it in D, I guess. Okay, let's keep it there for now. Let's move on to the amp um, envelope. So it's kind of like similar to how you would use, like if you're familiar with making bass lines with envelope modulations and things. It's kind of works, it's all rooted so that this amp will automatically, um, this envelope will automatically um, work on the volume. Um, so we can shape that. So this is like your attack. If I move it away, you get less click. Um, this is kind of like your sustain. So I can make this a bit lo longer. And then you can make like a kind of notch filter here. A notch filter, a notch kind of like shaping and if you click on the lines you can do these kind of mad curves which is also pretty useful there you go curves are quite cool at this point i wouldn't really um spend too much time faffing about with the kick i would maybe i'd do this as well i'd add, a, add another one here and just flatten that out a bit so you kind of bit more of a dead sound. Okay, so let's have a listen. Nothing special, but you know, it's a kick. And then once we've added other stuff, we can move all those parameters around and make it sound more how we want. Um, but there's no point doing more at this stage because we don't know what it's gonna go with. So next course of action, let's do, I know, let's do a baseline. I probably my go to plugin is operator. Um pretty simple pretty pretty simple synth. At the moment it's generating a sine wave, as you can see here. So you've got these four different operators or oscillators, I guess you could call them. Um at the moment you have this algorithm, which you the algorithm is how they kind of um <clears throat> root into each other, or you could call it a routing, I guess. So if you click on these horizontal squares here, at the moment, this feeds into that, that feeds into that, that feeds into that. If I turn this one up, it'll probably start to modulate this one. And, and thus ascending up. Does the same. They all just start modulating each other. And you can go through these different um, these different patterns, these different routing, figure out what it does with the sound. 
you kind of have to just do that yourself. I'm not exactly sure, but I guess it's quite self-explanatory. Like yellow goes into green and then they root into these. You can kind of see it by the colors. I'm going to keep it on this, this one. So at the moment, it's just literally generating a sine wave. These are also sine waves. You can change the waveform by going into here, clicking wave. You can, we've got saws, squares, um, so what are we going to do? Let's do, let's do something kind of funny. We'll stick with sine waves. And then let's add another side wave by turning up the level, which is volume. So we've got this kind of like spacey kind of FM sound. So we can keep it at that for now and we'll just build, build, layer it up. So we've got frequency here of the filter, which is a low pass filter. At the moment, it's a 24 filter. We can move that to 12. I quite like the sound of 12. Um, what we can do is we can turn the frequency down and here you got envelope. So this, if I turn this up, it modulates with this frequency. So let's just draw some notes in. So add another MIDI track and we can press this headphone thing here and session the sound. So we're in D. Where the hell's D? Where are you? D, where are you D? It's quite low there. We can try. Some random notes and we'll play around with it. So let's playing around with the synth, we can turn the course up on this one. I've probably got too much envelope, let's close it a bit. Okay, I'm going to turn the resi res residence down. So I just want to get the percussive sound and then I'm going to layer it with another bass. I don't want it to be too crazy. So I'm just going to play around with these levels. The course, that just means like an octave. I, th I think it goes up at octaves. So even that sounds cool. You can literally move stuff around. And if it sounds like um, something you like the sound of, I could just record myself do that, so I have to turn this off, <clears throat> have this thing selected, whatever that is. <laughs> Great teacher. Oh, you can actually click here, and when you hover over stuff, it tells you what it is. So, aut automation arm, so when it's on, it records automation. So when you basically, when you move stuff and this is selected and you hit record, it'll record the auto automation. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to select MIDI up here. I'm going to click on that knob and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to make it, I'm going to assign it to one of these knobs on my controller, just like that. I turn it off now when I move it around it should do stuff so let's just record some weird move movements that's oh, actually interesting that sounded quite cool 
when it was at four. So what I might actually do, which I wouldn't have figured out unless I heard it. So if I press A, oh sorry, I have to, I have to turn this keyboard off, which I can do by pressing M, and then press A, which uh, goes between these different views. So I have like a automation view, so I can see the automation I've done. You can see it is moving around here. And what I can do as well, I can click on this um, pencil or pen symbol and um, depending what the grid is, so at the moment the grid's quite big, if I do that it will go up in uh, increments of however long that is. But as you zoom in, you can see it gets smaller and smaller, depending what your grid is. So if I right click the space, at the moment it's on narrow, you can go narrower if you like. You can do stuff like this. So. so if you can't be, or if you don't have a controller, or you want to do it more pre precise, you can just use the pencil. Uh, you can also turn the grid off, and then draw it kind of more like curvy. Curvy? What am I saying? Is it off? You yeah, can turn it off, and you can just draw it um, without a grid. So something like that at the moment sounds kind of annoying, but uh, we can make it sound cool by doing other stuff. So just for ease, I'm just going to select this section and press Command D and just copy it over. So we can make the sound, make it a bit more wide. We can use the spread. That's quite cool. Um, I can EQ. So I'm going to EQ this. I usually, my go-to EQ is EQ8 in Ableton. I have got all the fab filters, but um, usually can't be bothered to load them up. It takes more brain power than I can, that, than I can give. <laughs> Uh, so and it's just easy to load it up. So I usually put on a low pass and just get rid of uh, a bunch of that mud. Which if I'm layering the bass, it's good to do these kind of uh, frequency separations. So in this case, I'm going to take out quite a lot of the low. I'll add a little um thingy here as well, just to take out some of the highs. So it's already mapped out for you. Just press buttons and it works. Okay, so keep it there. I'll probably add, maybe it's add some more FX. So pretty good thing to use. Uh, let's have a look at plugins. Serum FX is quite cool because you've basically got all the effects from Serum in one in one uh, plugin. So you can kind of add reverb, phases, distortion, all that kind of stuff, all in one plugin. So um, that can be quite handy. So let's check out this hyperdimension thing. It's kind of cool. So I could record myself just flapping around with the mix here. So I'll just go back a bit and do that. Um, let's do that. kind of mirroring the last um, automation there. Okay, let's try, there's a cool filter in here that's worth checking out. If I turn on the filter and you go into misc, it's miscellaneous, I guess it means, and it's reverb one. Sometimes it can be a bit nuts, but using it sparingly works quite nice. So let's have a listen to how it sounds. That's kind of cool. I'll do that. Record myself flapping around with that. Uh, 
So you'll see where I'm getting in a minute when I move on to this next section. So what I want to do is I'm going to freeze this. we will just right click in freeze. I'm going to make an audio track. And then if I hold alt and drag it across, it's going to freeze that for me. Then I'm going to unfreeze it. And I'm going to turn off the filter. And I will make another audio. Freeze it again, which basically is just kind of like a quick way of recording it. And then move that into another audio. So, And then what I'll do is I'll probably just mute that for now. I can turn it off here. And if I unfreeze it and select the whole thing and press zero, it just deactivates the clip. So visually it's kind of out of the way as well. So I've got these two different channels now. Um, you can hear them. With that weird uh, filter effect with the um, without. So what I can do is I can use I can just cut this up and manipulate it into the track how I want. So I can kind of cut stuff up, move it around, and I'll show you how I do that. But first, before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this MIDI pattern and I'm just going to write like a really basic baseline so I'm gonna get rid of all this actually um, I'll just start from the beginning so I'll add another um, operator and let's just hear it out what it sounds like so let's just go I don't know let's go square wave let's just have a listen yeah something like just really simple so I'm gonna just turn the the frequency cut off down you add a bit of envelope just something like that maybe a bit of spread actually what you can do to give it a bit more a bit more uh, click I add a group so I turn this into a group by just right clicking go group and then I pre press these little horizontal lines here and it comes up with Nios and then, so you can basically add stuff into this um, this box here. So what I'm going to do, I'll add a, let's add a drum rack. <coughs> Getting you. Can I add a drum rack? Should be able to add a drum rack. Um, why am I not being allowed? Why is it not allowing me? Okay, let's add a simpler instead. Okay, well, I thought you could add drum racks, but... Apparently it's not allowing me. Uh, I'm just going to type in percussion. That'll do. Just a donk. <laughs> um, and I'm just going to use this to layer over the top, just to add a bit of a percussive element to the bass. So let's hear what it sounds like on its own. Okay, that sounds awful. So what I need to do is it needs to be in the right key. So I need to go into the controls. Let's just move this sample. Let's make it. So if I go into controls here, I can take the transpose up. Uh, but I'm only going to use the click. I don't want it as a note. So I'm going to, it's got this um, filter section. I'm going to take the frequency all the way down. And then I'm going to turn the envelope up by clicking on the envelope here, in this little square. And then the amount all the way up, 72. I'm going to go back to the filter if I want to. I, um, I, don't do I can do it somehow. Oh, here. But what I want to do is I want to get rid of all the bass in that. So I can play it over the top of the other bass. So I'm going to go EQ8 again. And I'm going to put it in here. See, it makes this little blue line. Bang that in there. And then I'm going to select this, this bit here. And just cut out all the bass. And maybe a bit of the high as well. And maybe do a little notch in about the 300 range, which usually can be quite annoying. In that area. Obviously, I need to listen to it with the other bass now. So I'm going to unsolo that. So it's probably the wrong key, so I'm going to move this transpose around until it sounds right. Let's 
Something like that sounds all right to me. Um, I quite like the spread again. So that do. Uh, controls, I might um, turn the cut off down a bit. Okay. Um, and then on the whole uh, instrument rack, if I add another EQ after it, it will affect the whole thing. Whereas this EQ is only affecting this like a uh, percussion sample. So what I'd do is I'd just take out again some of those lows and just flap, uh, fiddle around with it, maybe do a little notch. Just something like that for now. Just so it's, uh, and let's hit, listen to that with a kick. I'll mute these. Okay, and then I might make one, another one, but a bit lower. So what I'll do, I will add another operator in here and maybe just have a sine wave. So if I solo it. Just like that. And then um, I'll EQ that as well on its own just so it's not generating too much voice. So here, gives it a bit more low end, and then we'll make, and then here an operator as well on the first one, this sound, I'm gonna EQ that separately as well. So I'll put another EQ in there. Uh, so just EQ everything as a rule of thumb, just do always EQ everything. And then listen to it all together. See that? Percussion sound could come down a bit. Okay, um, all right. What I could do also is I could side chain it, or if I don't want to side chain it, I can um, I can use a really good plugin that I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, where the hell is it? LFO tool, and the um, the preset basically does what I want it to do anyway, and the initialized. In, when it's initialized. So it just lowers the volume of that first note so it doesn't jam with the kick too much. Yeah. Um, could also maybe add a bit of compression to boost the volume of the whole thing. So maybe glue compressor, I'll add. What I'll do is I'll add, add it before this EQ because the glue compressor is probably going to generate a load more bass. Maybe I'll give it a sharp attack. Quick release, and then I'll turn the threshold down, and then turn the makeup up, and you'll hear. Turn the clip on, so it doesn't clip. Okay. Um, so, what can we do now? So I've got my basic bass, kick and bass. I can probably go back into the kick now and make a few adjustments. It's probably just a bit loud for now. Maybe I can just make this. Down. Probably put an EQ on it. There is an EQ built into it, but if you just want to, uh, want to use the EQ8, it might be easier. So you could just do another low cut and then you could boost the highs just like that. A little bit. Okay. Um, all right. So let's listen what we got here. That's quite a cool sound. Usually what I do is I'll just, um, I'll open another audio track and I'll just start dragging stuff in here from my recordings. So I'll scan through this recording, try to find something interesting. That's quite cool. Let's grab that bit and find a home for it. So I can unmute that and now it'll play. Quite cool. Um, I can put an EQ on this channel as well, so we're not clashing bass frequencies. Just take the bass out of that a bit. 
You do loads of stuff with audio, which is really cool. This is, you can do loads of stuff. So let's make that, let's duplicate that and see what I can do else with this. Um, so you've got these, all these different warp modes. We could stretch it out like four times the length, but just by pressing this uh, times two thing here, have a listen to what it does. So that's what Beats is doing. It's kind of making it um, in the transients here, as you can see, it's creating this kind of flutter. You can do it in time as well. It's got these different modes. You've got uh, textures, which is quite interesting. So if I turn the flux down and move this grain size around. <laughs> So something like this could be quite interesting. Um, so I'm going to make another audio track, drag that in. I'll just find the key again by ear. So I think it needs to go up two semitones for it to be in pitch. Well, that's what I can hear. Free, so. Uh, okay, so I'm going to select that and press Command J, and now it's going to make a whole new audio. Let's see what it sounds if I click on the pitch and if I press, um, I think, command down, it will drop it 12 semitones. So I might get a bit of a deeper sound. Ooh, that's quite nice. Uh, let's add an auto filter over the top of that and let's just filter in a bit, like do a little sweepy sweep. So if I, if I turn the filter down to the bottom and then I've got my automation line here and I can do like a little triangle, a little sweep. If I press Alt, I can do a little curve. That's quite interesting, that's a little whoop. So we could even have that on the first beat. Yeah, we could do that again here, or maybe something a bit different, maybe somewhere else in the sample. Let's do, let's do that, like a longer sweep. Or we could go back to zero pit. No, it sounded better lower. Let's do the keep with that. Okay, cool. Um, maybe what I'll do uh, before the filter, I'll add another serum effects before it, and maybe I can just jam in a few effects to uh, make it stand out a bit. So this one's cool, the hyper dimension thing. So I'll just have a bit of that in there. Um, it's just a bit of distortion, see if we can add a bit of this. Move that around a bit. Turn the volume up. Chorus, have a give that a go. That's kind of taking away a bit much, so let's not add that. What other effects could I use? I could uh, EQ again. So always taking the low out and maybe increase the highs a bit. Okay. Um, reverb is another great tool. So let's just, let's use just the, the normal reverb we have here. You, know, you can put a low cut on, how convenient is that? Go high density. There we go. Lovely. Um, compressor. Add a glue compressor. Similar thing to what I did before. Put on the soft clip. And then because I've turned it up, I can turn it down on here to compensate the volume uh, increase. Put on another EQ after it because it's probably there that we don't want get rid of that 
so you can see I'm, I'm quite fast. I'm pre usually pretty geeky when it gets to this stage. I'm just like, dang it, zap, 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 zap. Okay, so we've got that sound. We've got this one here. So what I could do with a call response with this one, what I'm hearing. So instead of having that go diddle in again, I could get rid of that. Let's get another sound in here. So let's add another MIDI track, and I'm basically I'm what I'm hearing is a call and response from this sound here. So instead of it coming back into this bass, let's have it do something else. So let's keep it simple. Go back into operator. I'm just going to select this little square here. Create MIDI track. We're in D, aren't we? So um, low D. Um, I'm going up and down the octaves by just using the whatever that is. This little arrow, I think that's tab or shift, and going up and down with the keys. If I press, if I highlight the clip, oh, highlight the clip and press legato, it stretches the note, whole note across the MIDI track. Um, so let's do a kind of like filter sweep thing here. Or some kind of like. What, what am I hearing? So some kind of filter sweep, yes. Maybe we could do something uh, with saw wave. Let's do let's do, do two saw waves. So turn the level up there. Um, uh, but what we can do? Let's do like filter sweep. So what I'll do is I'll put on a, um, a drive. So I'm just going to make a really horrible, muddy, distorted sound and then f do a filter sweep afterwards. So I'm going to add an amp. So it doesn't have to sound pleasant at this stage. Okay, cool. Maybe make it lower. Just made it lower by making the course on the first oscillator um, 0.5. Let's add another amp. See if I can go f toggle through some of these presets. And I can kind of mix it in using this dry and wet. That'll do ya. Um, maybe a bit of reverb. Or, oh look, we got here pitch envelope. This is quite cool. If I turn this on, and this is like a little envelope. See how it works if I move this envelope around. Sounds a bit ducky at the moment. <laughs> um, we can use a modulator. Let's use... No, let's not use a modulator yet. Let's use the shifter. And then what I can do... Um, what I can do is I can click on frequency. No, sorry, ring modulator. Just this ring mode here. So it creates a bit of movement. Um, and then auto filter. And I'll just sweep it in. So I turn it all the way down. And then just have it sweep it. Yeah, so I'm getting that movement just from moving the course um, thing. Let me turn the spread. Um, okay, let's add maybe some more amp. Let's hear what it sounds like with the track because you can get lost. Don't really like that so much. Let's what I'm going to do is usually if I make a sound like this and I'm not happy with it, before just chucking it and moving on to the next idea, I'll try to freeze it and see what I can do with it in an audio. So I flatten it. I've got this sound here, and I'll try a few different things. Maybe pitch it down. Okay, I can't hear it in beats, so let's go texture. Okay, so instantly I prefer that. So what I can do, I keep that. I'll go back to my filter. 
add another filter onto this channel and I'll just filter that in, like do a little filter sweep. Maybe on the first bit, I'll have a curve. I can reverse it. Click on the channel and press R. Okay, not the best sound. I can maybe clip my, in the in the actual um, audio. I can make warp markers and like stretch it like this. Let's move this flux. Okay, um, and then let's flatten that. Um, let's add a cool reverb, Valhalla Vintage Verb. It's one of my fives. Um, I turn the mix down. Let's go back to my original idea and just, we can mix it with this, something a little bit less fancy, just something really simple. Let's just go, well, I can't even be bothered to make a new track. I'm just going to copy that across. <laughs> um, consolidate. I'm just going to do a square wave and, a, and a, like a basic filter sweep. Just so we've still got some bass. Just something like that. Resonance. And maybe... 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 Um, some... Where are you? Let me try to find the effect. Redux is kind of nice. So we can turn um, this jitter up. Just adds this kind of weird clicky color to it. EQ it. Oh, not EQ through. EQ I. Let's do that, and then mixed with the other one. Quite simple, but maybe I could make the kick do something. Like that. Yeah, uh, let's have a listen. What else we got here? It's quite nice. Let's take that. Add another MIDI track. Audio track, sorry. Put that in there. Just hold Alt. And what can I do with this? That sounds even quite nice there. Maybe play around the pit. Reversed, what we got if we reverse it? There's a nice layering there. Turn the volume down. Yeah, um, okay, I'm not so into this double kick thing. I'm gonna. Mm, mm, okay, let's have a listen to else what we got. I love these little swoopy things. Just throw in some of these. That's quite like that one. I reckon we could do stuff with that. Let's see what we can do with that one. Maybe just filter it in. The little filteries. Just get a little bit of it in. Yeah, something like that. And filter this in. I don't think it should stop, but you 
can kind of get the idea of what I was going for. Now we can just maybe we can utilize these in different ways. This is kind of a bit of an atmosphere, so maybe have it at the start. That'd do you. But uh, better, better. Because we've taken the low off, I think we can um, layer it with that. Yeah, this is kind of like an atmosphere now. So yeah, this is kind of what I do as well, which I think is quite an interesting point. Um, usually if I think of an idea and I completely fail the idea, I will try to still run with it and improvise it into something else. Like for example, what what I've done here, I was going for a little um, little fill thing. Didn't really work out, so I've just moved, I've still used what I've made. Do you know what I mean? Um, so um, so we're not putting stuff to waste, you know, we're recycling I old ideas. Um, which is and sometimes you know you might not you might not get anything out of what you've done but i think it's i think it's important to try to use it and then if it's just not working just move on just do something else <clears throat> not literally something else like <laughs> stop making music but like a different idea um i'm gonna have another little scan through here I think these ones are quite interesting. Maybe I can do something with this, like a little stab, maybe. Let's have a little listen on its own. Maybe I can move this start point around. Maybe there's something I can do with this. Maybe I can put a delay on it. <laughs> Ever in doubt, put a delay on it. Okay, we've got echo. We can turn the reverb up and the stereo. So you've got a reverb there as well. Oh, that's quite nice. Move the, um, if I open up here, this filter, it will echo in different, so in the moment, it'll echo high in the highs or in the lows, depending on what you do here. Make the, let's make the feedback quite long. then I can slowly turn up the amount of this LFO and it should start to goof out the uh, the uh, the feedback tail. Is it gonna go So that's quite cool, I like that. pan so it goes between the different speakers yeah so quite subtle but and the eq of course always eq let's just have a listen let's have a look down to this track So I noticed straight away that's a bit loud, so let's turn that down. All right. So I guess at this point, let's minimize all this. Let's add a hi-hat, get a bit of a groove going. So I'm just going to add a drum rack here. Add a drum brick. For some reason I can't add, oh no, drum synth, that's what I'm doing. I'll keep clicking drum synth instead of drum rack. <laughs> okay, let's just add some uh, hi-hats. What have we got? Thomas Pen Penton. I'm sure he's got some okay hi-hats. Okay, instead of just clicking through every single thing, I'm just going to grab the whole lot. Because that's, you know, if you're a procrastinator, don't do that. <laughs> just select the whole bunch and bang it in your drum rack because you'll just be there forever otherwise make a little four bar loop create a midi track, drag it across Draw in your offbeat um, hi-hat and then just go through the different hi-hats and see what one sounds better Yeah, I've 
ones. I don't have any closed ones. Open one. Let's just I can see it lighting up there. I'm gonna click the square there. Click on that. Uh, I'm gonna put it in classic mode. Take the sustain down. Closed hi hat. So I turn the volume up. Let's get it in pitch. I'll move the transpose around to I like it. Turn the dry wet down. Okay, uh, and then I'm just going to um, freeze that. Just so I don't have like a million samples all loaded up. Keep the uh, CPU down a bit. So there we go, basic hi hat groove. There we go, we kind of got a loop now. Um, we can start doing other stuff. Different layering, uh, snare, you can build up the percussion or whatever. But this is how I'd start a track, you know, it might end up sounding completely different. I might end up changing the bass completely. Uh, but this is how I start getting the layering and the composition going. Okay, so before we finish, maybe I'll just add one more sound. Um, maybe some kind of freaky sound design. Let's add a stab using stab, sound like Alan Partridge, uh, using operator. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do like a little minor key stab chord thing. So I'm going to add another MIDI track, sorry, not a audio. Uh, let me just figure out what it is. <laughs> Something like that, I think. What? Um, so some kind of minor key thing. You can do it a few different ways. You can literally draw in one note and use the chord plugin and just uh, move it around. So we could try that actually. Uh, it might be easy. So draw in a D note. There's a D. And then chord, if it is still here, I think it's in MIDI effects, you can go on chord. And then you can you can make little shifts. So you just move them around and it's essentially adding notes on top. So you can make like um, strange little like minor minor chords. And um, yeah, so this is just doing a sine wave. As I turn up level one, which is another sine wave on operator two, it's it's doing some frequency modulation with oscillator A. Something like that. Maybe turn that to course. Yeah, um, I'm gonna turn the frequency down and increase the envelope. Something like that. Um, I'm gonna make that that long. Get rid of these and just play. Let's hear what it sounds like. I might have got the key wrong, to be honest. Uh, okay, I'm gonna play around with the filter just so it sounds right. Okay, I'm just going to draw in some more notes now. Uh, maybe I'll just copy and paste that. A 
I'm just going to solo the um, the bass and the kick, just so. And I can add some effects. I quite like this um, filter delay as well. It's quite nice. Uh, I'm going to take down, I'm going to move the EQ a bit. Actually, I'm going to add an EQ after the, um, the filter delay. Because whenever you add effects, it seems to just add loads of frequencies. If you double click, yeah, your EQ actually comes up big on the screen. MIDI effects, you can make chords. Um, let's just add a little bit of effects on this um, particular sound to mix it in a bit better. Let's use this hybrid reverb. adding reverb to those frequencies um okay so the only thing i kind of want to do now just for me is i'm going to add a, a snare or a clap so i'm going to go into mid drum rack and let's go what we got in here claps let's just grab them all as before throw them in we'll just find a clap just to finish up on just so we've got a nice full loop we can work with later. So the claps are in are here, so you can see. I'm gonna find the clap. I'm gonna go through them all. It doesn't have to be perfect as well because you can lay them. So I'm going to stick with that one and I'm going to find it in my drum rack. There. And then put it into classic mode again. I'm just going to take the sustain down. And then I'm going to find another one. It's just volume, I think. Let's layer that across. And now let's find one with a bit more high frequency. <laughs> okay, take that one and then. Sustain down. Yep, that'll do. Mix it in, the volume's too loud, so. And a EQ. So, I'm not going to take too much bass out, but I'm probably going to give it a little boost here. Just before we finish up, one other thing, it's quite cool. I could just record, uh, let's just select the master, whoop, and I'll just record a section here. 
This bit here, I'm going to drag it here. I'm going to command consolidate it by pressing command J. And I'm going to stretch it four times. Yeah, and then in tech, I'm going to put it in texture mode. Uh, yeah, and then what I'll do is I'm just going to take that little bit at the end. And then I'm going to delete some of this track. So I'm going to select this section, press Command E, which will cut it, and then press 0, which will deactivate all those clips. And then what I want to do is I kind of want to I'll filter this in, I guess. So here is, I've just put a filter on here. No, I haven't. I put it on there. Where did I put that filter? Okay. It went somewhere. <laughs> Something has a filter on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the first thing come in there and then I'm going to filter it in like this. And it's just a nice little effect. And then maybe, maybe what we can do is we can have another kick here. So it can kind of do something like that. Let's have a listen. Turn that off there. Let's just go. Let's just go nuts. Something happened to the automation there. I'm going to EQ this like that. Maybe on that wall bit, I can add a. Serum effects. <laughs> Just put it on everything. Maybe use this hyper dimension. Sounds a bit more like hoo ya. Maybe a compressor. That knock is a bit mad. I'm gonna put a fade on there. So that's an easy effect you can do just by sampling the track and cutting bits out. So let's just have a listen to what I died from the start. Take the oop, what are you doing? Take, ah, take the loop off. So nothing special, just a kind of um maybe how i'd start to produce a track i'd start off with a little crazy loop like this and just start building up ideas even as i said even if i end up switching the bass and just keeping some of these effects it's a good way to just get your brain working um to start with a loop loop start with a kick and bass start adding some percussions some snares some sounds um making sound design having these little kind of um reference recordings that you can just dip back in take bits out Obviously, the more crazy sounds you do, the more stuff you can use, um, more more content you've got to take from that uh, audio. Um, yeah, so that's how I would start a groove. I hope this video has been useful. And uh, please let me know in the comments if there's anything I could improve on if I'm going too fast. I haven't done many of these um, videos before. So it'd be good to hear what you think. Um, yeah, till the next one, take care and happy producing. Goodbye.